What is up guys, this is Juan from Cosmic Fury and on this video I'll be taking a look at Gotham by Midnight issue number 3 and do a review at the end. So early warning for spoilers, but if we were all cool, then let's continue. Surviving from a previous case in issue number 2, Corrigan and Lisa move on to Gotham County Hospital, where a report of an unusual case was referred to the team. A child named Jenna is a patient who is moved into one of the isolation wards. After several medical tests on Jenna, it indicates that she has smallpox, even despite already being vaccinated. And not to mention smallpox has been wiped out for many generations now. But however, this is not the reason for the case being classified as unusual. Her living shadow with an articulated heart is the most obvious at this point. Ray Fox continues the pattern of switching current scenes and origin flashbacks as how it was done in previous issues. And in issue number 3, it shows a time before Lisa Drake joins the current freak show of a task force. Lisa is somehow mixed in illegal dealings between two parties. But however, she goes on about slurring and being completely high while her accomplice by the name of Fred is trying to close the exchange. But things escalate as the drug dealers decided to make Fred to be the one who pulls the trigger on the guy in the trunk of their car, who just so happens to be Corrigan. Back in the current time, at the midnight shift precinct house, Sergeant Rook is going through the usual paperwork. While Dr. Char and Sister Justine are going through the evidence uncovered from the previous two issues. After a phone conversation, Dr. Char does a mad dash and proceeds to the hospital where Corrigan is. Upon hearing about a living shadow, the curiosity of Dr. Char gets the best of him. Back at the hospital, Lisa and Dr. Patel are in their bio suit and ready themselves to enter the isolated room. While Corrigan is on standby, just in case things go bad. And by now, it's established that in Gotham by midnight, things going bad is pretty normal. And eventually, things do go bad. Upon reaching out to Jenna by Dr. Patel, the living shadow looms over the poor doctor who unfortunately dies. The living shadow is very dangerous. All he needs to do is just lay a shadow upon that person for an instant death with no physical contact needed. The shadow then escapes the locked isolation room, killing several more hospital staff in its way. By now, Dr. Char had arrived on site and luckily Corrigan saved him just in time before the living shadow could kill him as well. Reverting to the flashback, Lisa seems to be groggy and the only thing the drug dealers are concerned about is not having her puking all over the car. Using this situation, Lisa then pulls out a gun and does her police routine. All this while being in the guise of an undercover. Being the only able cop, she was overwhelmed by the drug dealers. But just before the situation got worse, Lisa emits a loud scream and what seems to be a psychic wave that rendered the drug dealers confused and followed by being shot dead by Lisa. In the current moment, Corrigan readies the power of the Spectre, while he and Dr. Tara are still figuring out on how to stop the actual shadow. As the living shadow closes in on them, Dr. Char miraculously communicates with it in a language much similar to what sounds in the evidence they were studying. And just so happens, the shadow communicates back. Using this advantage from the shadow's paws, Lisa acts on her idea by using a flashlight on a segment of the living shadow of which was still connected to Jenna. And for everyone's sake, the trick worked and the living shadow was outshined. Issue number 3 is still satisfying despite it feeling a bit short. Flashbacks and current scenes are still well balanced out. Action moments are well transitioned and it still does make you curious for the next scene. At the end of the issue, it confirms even more of the incoming danger that is heading for Gotham. Origin stories are paced just enough to make you care of the character building that goes on in the series. And if you like the art style in the previous two issues, it is still ongoing in issue number 3. You can get Gotham by Midnight Trade Paperback consisting of issues 1 to 6 at Book Depository at around $21 SGD. On Comixology, issue number 3 is going at $1.99 USD. Also, you can always try out on getting the series at your local comic book stores, 
which is probably still available. I do recommend checking out Gotham by Midnight if you haven't, especially if you're a fan of horror and action. Pretty much that's all I have for this review, hope you guys like it. Tell me what you think in the comments. This is one from Cosmic Fury, like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.